Hey YouTube, I'm going to do my base face and then we're going to get into the Viseart Minx Etendu palette. So I'm just going to speed through my base face. I changed my seating a little bit and I'm not liking the lighting. You know what? I'm retarded. I didn't have my light on it behind the, the camera. <laughs> so I'm going to speed through the base face. And for all of these looks using this palette, my base face will be the same. Alright, we're ready to jump into this palette. I am not liking how this eye primer is looking, and so I'm hoping that if I am having issues with the shadows, that it's not the shadows, it's the e.l.f. Putty Primer. And also, the silver handle brushes you saw me use, they are a part of, um, well not part of, this is the Esom 8-piece set that I showed you yesterday. And so I am going to be using just these brushes. I'm going to try to use just these brushes <laughs> to do my eye look. And I did use the powder brush for powder. I don't know what I'll use the blush brush for. So that's over there. But I am going to uh, use all of these. I already used this one for the primer underneath my lower lash line. So let's jump into this palette. You can, well I want to give you some more details about it. Because I did go online and I looked up some more information just so I can tell you for those of you who have it. Um, this says on the Muse Beauty Pro site, Minex features an extended range of warm mid-tone mattes, sizzling shimmers, and dynamic dual chromes that play homage to the heritage of the original Theory Minx, Theory Siren, Golden Hour, Warm Mattes, Grand Pro 1 and Grand Pro 3 palettes. So these are shades that are already out there in the palettes that are listed, like this is the website. I <laughs> copied and pasted and printed it out. <laughs> and so these are shadows that are already out here. And for each shade, it tells you which palette it came from. There are five mattes in here, six shimmers and one satin. These first two are from the Minx, well this is from Minx 1, this is from Minx 2. This is from Warm Mattes. This is from Grand Pro 3. This one is from Minx 3. This one is from Golden Hour. This one is from Siren. This one isn't from anyone. If, if it is, they didn't list it. And it also has what the number is for some of these shadows. This one is Chocolate 2 from Grand Pro 1. This is the number 6 color in that palette. This one is Mahogany. It doesn't say where that's from. This is from Siren, and it's the number 6 shade in that palette. And this one is Hannah, and it doesn't say where it's from. And I should have set, um, gave you descriptions of what the shadows are 
should I go back and do that? No. Okay, so let's jump into it. <laughs> I should have did that. Like, I am so not used to actually doing informational videos. Um, yeah, I'm already shiny. I'm wondering if I should spray my face. So, we're going to take the large dome brush and because this is a non-shade on me we're going to use this one first as a transition color and i know i just got real quiet i was wondering if this was going to skip over that primer because with the fenty primer shadows skip because that is so tacky and i'm finding that the elf putty primer even though shadows stick nice, I can just go in and just swipe like I see almost everybody else doing with their shadows. And so that's new for me and I do kind of like it. And because I do have extra skin, sometimes if I push too hard, it will skip just because my skin moves. And so that's not necessarily the shadow or the primer. It's just I have ugh, all this, all of this skin. And it moves skin moves anyway so that's not strange so I'm hoping this will give some of you an idea of what you can do with this palette if you have it I was just going to do a series of, of looks and post them all in one palette but I think I'm gonna just post this one today um, just to have one out there on this because I haven't seen any looks with this palette oh, pizza hair. Okay, so it's a little color, but it's really my skin tone if I didn't have this primer on. And so we're going to take the smaller one, and we're going to go into this color right here, because this will put it... There is not a lot of kick up in the pan, a little bit, but not much. We're going to take this one directly into the crease, and then we're going to blend it. And we're going to feather it out over here a little bit. I'm learning how to wing my eyeshadow a little bit to change the shape of my eye because I always tend to just follow my eye shape and so my looks are always round. <laughs> Not a lot of kick up, but I do have a habit of tapping my brush anyway, particularly for crease colors. For lid colors, if I'm pressing, it doesn't matter, but when I'm sweeping, it's just a tendency to tap the brush just in case there is excess shadow um, that may fall out. These are smooth. I remember saying, why does it feel like a piece of hair on my lip? I remember saying, I'm going now and just going sideways because I'm going to sweep this in the crease. And I keep starting the same sentence and not finishing it. I remember saying these didn't feel as soft and buttery as the other shadows, but so far the two mattes that I've used, what's that third shade of matte? Yes. I should have said that. Oh gosh, maybe I'll do that part over or I'll put that for bonus footage at the end for those of you who stick around. Or I could just say what it is. The first shade I used, <laughs> this first shade, this, you know, that's going to slow me down. Okay, I'm not going to do that because this video will be longer than it is. And you can change these. You can pull them out and rearrange them, but then if you do that, it's going to, it's not even on there. If you do that, <laughs> you'll be out of order with um, what the names of the shadows are on the back of the palette. And so I tend to never rearrange palettes. And for palettes where there's like a glitter shade that I don't like, I just remove it all together and place another matte shadow there that I received as a sample from somewhere. I do not rearrange palettes because I like to know what stuff is called, not that I tell you guys what they're called anyway. So I am digging how this is looking. I'm going to switch to the flat brush just because I want to use these brushes. So far, I've used five ha, 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 of my new brushes. I'm going to take this first shade here with the small brush and use this one for a brow bone highlight. The one thing I don't like about that primer is that it's noticeable that I have on primer. <laughs> and so I feel like I have to do a brow bone highlight just to cover up the primer. And I don't like a lot of lightness up here because I do have so much space. And you see how it just makes my eye look... What's the word I'm looking for? It brings forward the top part of my eye. 
because it's so light and I want it to sit back. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that first brush I had and that first color I used, this one right here, I'm gonna tap it straight in. There is no kick up in the pan. And I am going to sweep this under my brow bone. So you see how this one is, it looks more forward because of the lightness and putting this shade on here, it pushed it back a little bit. So it doesn't look like <laughs> the top of my eye space is protruding okay you see what i mean so that took it back this is a great <laughs> cover-up shade blending shade for me because it is my skin tone and i love it because if i mess up i can just put this on there or tone down a shade which is what i'm doing now it still feels like a piece of hair on my lip like did a piece of my eyelash fall out okay so you see what i mean and because we did that, I'm going to go back in with this, the smaller brush and I'm going to go back into this color and put some more of that slightly above the crease. Earlier I took it directly in the crease. This time I'm going to take it slightly above. There is no kick up in the pan. Like when you tap it straight in, like there is no kick up. <sighs> I like this palette. I want to use three colors. <laughs> and I like it. And so we have that there. So we're just gonna blend it out on this edge over here. Oh, this feels nice. I'm liking this e.l.f. primer. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Okay, what do I wanna put on the lid? I think I'm gonna do two different shades on the lid. And I'm going to, this brush is so friggin' big. This says medium. I believe this was the medium. But look at this. It takes up the whole pan. Look at that. It's like the, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just to use more than one color on my lid. I'm going to take this on the first half and then I'm going to turn the brush over and put this shade on the second half. And so we're going to see what that looks like. This brush takes up the whole pan. <laughs> this is, it is so funny to me. And I'm going to tap it off. Is that the first shade? I mean, the first half of the lid? Yes. And I'm doing my press and swipe. Taking it a little into... Oh, this is smooth. So even on my fingers and doing the swatches on my arm, it didn't feel smooth, but it does. Or it could just be this brush is so awesome. These brushes are really soft. I'm really glad I purchased these. I was online looking today at their shader brushes. They have angled brushes. And I love angled shader brushes. And I was like, okay, I want to order some of their angled brushes. And the prices are comparable, like $20, $22, $24, which is the price that, you know, we pay for brushes anyway. Except for the Real Techniques brushes. <laughs> Um, but I said, let me use these first and make sure I like them before I make another purchase. And so right now there are three in my cart though. One's a liner brush. There's a small angled shader brush and I think it's either a medium or a large. I think it's a medium shader brush. And so those are in my cart right now. And three of those are like $62, which is comparable because it's like 20 something bucks a piece for a brush. I'm going to switch this over and use this shade down here. I'm going to put that on my outer corner not outer corner the second half of my lid for like an ombre look these are working so well oh, i love vizier shadows the ones that don't break me out which palette was it that broke me out there's a video somewhere i know i talked about it in my um i'm allergic to carmine additive video and I'm just going to sweep this in the crease, the residual shadow that's on the brush. And make sure there's no gaps between the lid and my crease. And so I start a little above the crease and just press it down, press the shadow down. I like this. A nice monochromatic look, very easy to do, neutral everyday wear. Just for giggles, I have one more brush I haven't used yet. <laughs> but I'm not gonna use that yet. <laughs> I'm gonna flip this one over. This is the one I use my brow bone highlight and I'm gonna take this shade here 
and use this as an inner corner highlight. So that'll be one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six shadows that I used out of this 12 pan palette. I'm so proud of myself. So I'm just gonna, ooh, that's nice. That just intensified um, this shade. This shade intensified that one, as you can see. Ooh. Hmm. That would be nice for all over. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, is this going to work for that? I'm going to take, this is the last one out of the AP set to use. I'm going to take this shade here and put that, do I want to do my upper lash line? Uh, I'm lying, I didn't use the blush brush. Okay, I think this might be too thick for this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this to do an outer V with this brush instead of trying to use it as a liner brush. So that's what we're going to do. I'm so proud of myself. I just received these items yesterday, December 26th. Today is December 27th, and I'm using them. Ah, I'm so excited. And I did wash the brushes yesterday. They dried within a few hours, which is great. So doing it out of the is that working? <laughs> this side to me looks darker than this side. Maybe I went higher up. I mean not higher up, but further in. There we go. There we go. These are layering nicely, and I like that it's not looking muddy. And to blend that, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wipe off the small brush and I'm going to blend out that shade I just put there just very lightly because I don't want to lose it and I don't want it to get muddy which I don't have a problem with Viseart shadows getting muddy anyway and so this is what we're going to do with this this is what we're doing how is that looking on your side of the screen how is that looking to you because when I look up I can't see <laughs> what it's looking like I can see it when I look down, but I want to see it like straight on like how you guys are seeing it. So I guess I'm going to just have to wait until I edit the video and hope I don't look like a clown. All right, so I'm going to wipe off this small brush. And I'm going to, let me see, what am I going to take? I want to try another color for giggles. I didn't use this one yet. I'm going to take this on the first half under my lid under my lid, my lower lash line, and then I'm going to put this one on the remaining. I am so proud of myself for like using like all of these shadows. Because I see videos and people are like, well, I'm going to use as many as I can, and I'm just like, oh, that's, I'm more simple than that. But then here I am. Am I growing in my makeup application skill? even though I sucked at providing information about the actual shadows. So now we're gonna go in with this shade here. I entertain myself. I hope you're as entertained as I am. If you are, feel free to subscribe, it's free. If you like this video, click like. I like this shade. These go on, oh my gosh, I like this palette. It's so smooth, as if that's not why I liked Viseart in the first place. Ooh, I'm going to connect, which it never stays connected because when my eyes tear, I either take a Q-tip or my finger and dab right here. So that removes like whatever shadow is there to connect. Okay, that's there. So I'm going to wipe off that small one again and just lightly back and forth. This is nice because it's not moving the skin under my eyes too much. A little bit, but not a lot, but it's going to move if... I have something under there and I'm brushing it because I have extra skin. I like this look. So what are you guys thinking? I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shades in this 12 pan eyeshadow palette. So I'm pleased with myself with that. So I'm going to put the covering back on here, which I really love. And we're going to close this up and we're going to use... 
I thought I sat it out. Where did I put it? I didn't pull out eyeliner because I was going to use that one, but that did not. I was going to use a powder liner with that brush and that didn't work. You know, let me try it with this little brush. Let me try it with the little brush. And I'm going to take that purple again. And hopefully it will go, it will show up. Oh, poke myself in the eye. Is that showing up on your side? Yeah, there it goes. I turned the brush sideways and now the line is thicker than I wanted it to be. Mm. But you can see the color. I like this look. Oh, my heat just turned back on. So if my sound gets funky, that's why. I think I have it set on 72, I think. I am digging it. I want to use the blush brush just so I can say I use every brush in this collection. Hmm. I'm going to take, I'm going to take some more translucent powder because I went ham on the blush on this side. This side I really like, this side I'm not liking. So I'm just going to take the blush brush, dip it in, and then put it in the cap. Wiggle it around. Ooh, powder everywhere. And just lightly dust this on my cheeks. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm doing right now. Just to tone down <laughs> the blush. There you go. It's better, right? Better. So I've used my new Viseart Minx, Minx at Intendu Eat It. Eat it. I don't know how to pronounce it. I keep wanting to say intendu, but it's E-T, so it's not an end. A tendu, maybe. And all eight of the brushes and the brush, eight piece brush set. What am I gonna do, mascara? First of all, I'm gonna put something on my waterline, which I know I'm gonna regret unless I wash this off within like four hours. <laughs> I've been having issues. This is the <laughs> Sephora eye pencil to go and this one is navy blue I was excited when I first tried this because it did not irritate my eyes but then I realized after like four and a half five hours my eyes were really itchy and I washed it off right away and my eyes were teary and itchy for the rest of the night but the next day they were fine the last time I used one of these when my eyes got itchy I was being lazy and I didn't wash it off I didn't wash my face and so going on until like the eighth hour, by the time I washed it off, my eyes were so itchy, irritated, red, and oh my gosh, my eyes were swollen and itchy and red for literally three days. And so I know if I use this <laughs> just for videos and then wash it off, or if I know I'm just going somewhere quick to lunch, come home and wash it off. Because if I leave it on past four or five hours, no bueno. What is it I wanna do? Mascara. This is um, came in a birthday kit from Sephora. Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. So I'm using this. I never used it before, not that I remember. It smells funny. But we're gonna wash this off so it can smell funny. If you have this eyeshadow palette, let me know what your thoughts are on it. <laughs> If you've done looks with this palette, feel free to link them below and I will check them out. I like what this mascara is doing to my lashes. To me, it seems to do the same thing the Urban Decay Troublemaker mascara does and also dropping stuff, sorry for the noise, and also the Fenty mascara. It seems to be doing the same thing that those two do, which I like. It is fanning them out. I'm not going to use this mascara again, though, because the smell is making my nose itch, like for real. <laughs> and so I know it's only going to be a matter of time before my eyes start to water, even more so from putting on liner on my waterline. 
Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Okay. Let's try not to drop anything else. What are we going to do for lips? Perfect thing for lips, I hope. I am going to open. <laughs> this is the Fenty cream and cookie jar. I purchased this one because it's a neutral and I really like the hot chocolate one. Oh, Aha! I caught it in my leg. I thought it was going to slide off and fall. And so I'm like, okay, this is neutral enough where I would wear this just anytime, anywhere. And so this is my first time trying this. I'm going to put this on. It smells uh, weird. Ugh. Oh, I don't like how it smells. Yeah. Well, maybe the mascara smell is still in my nostrils. I like this color. I do. Feels good. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for bearing with me. If you want to see me go through describing these colors, which I should have done when I did the swatches, I will do that. I'll add that as like bonus something or other at the end of this video because this video is long. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know how you like this look. I am really digging it. This was so easy to work with. I am so glad that I purchased it. If you have all the other palettes, the Minx 1, Minx 2, Warm Matte, Grand Pro 1, Grand Pro 2, and the Siren Golden Hour palette, then you already have all of these colors except two that aren't listed wherever they were before so they may be new i'm not sure but if you did really like those colors and you want them all in one place yes and busy are still is having a sale right now where you can get this one and the purplish one i forget what it's called in a bundle these are 44 dollars a piece the bundle you get this one and the purple one for 88 dollars but you also i think get two eyeshadow brushes and i think you may get a liner i'm not sure so if you're interested in either one of these new etendu palettes etendu however you pronounce it then this is a good time to get it because then you also get extra stuff and if you get a couple brushes which are like 20 something dollars a piece you're getting them for free or even if you get their hot their eyeliner um along with the brushes and the bundle you know you save yourself some money that way if all of that stuff was already on your wish list if not don't do it don't just do it because it's on sale but i really wanted this palette and so i got the palette and i saw the brushes vegan brushes yes so i'm going to end this here and then i'm going <laughs> to add bonus footage describing the colors and so that's it for this part of the video let me know how you like this look let me know how you're liking this palette let me know how you're liking the brushes i really enjoyed using each and every one of these they were all soft application went on really good really smooth um as i said i washed them yesterday they dried within like a few hours which is great um so that is it and if you have any questions about anything that i sped up the products i used i'll try to remember to list them below thank you for watching you will see me in the next video So since I'm so bad with describing shadows <laughs> when I do swatches, because I hardly never do swatches, I'm going to read off <laughs> not only where these colors are from in previous Viseart palettes, but also describe for you what it says the shade is. This one is, I can't pronounce it, Pechi. It's P-E-C-H-E, but it has one of them little things over top of the E. This is from... Well, I'm sorry, excuse me. The Pechi 2 is the color. It's from the Minx 1 palette, and it's described as light beige with a matte finish. This one here is suede from the Minx 2 palette, warm champagne with a shimmer finish. This one is Saverin from the Warm Mattes 5 palette, warm mid-tone brown with a matte finish. This one is Cognac from the Grand Pro 3 palette. It's the number 28 shade in that palette terracotta nude with a matte finish this one is sable from minx palette the number three color in that palette milk chocolate brown with a matte finish 
This one is Ember from the Golden Hour palette, number five shade in that palette. Orange copper with a shimmer finish. This one, Apricot from the Siren palette, number two color in that palette. Golden Apricot with a shimmer finish. This one, Rosas, R-O-S-E-U-S, -E is described as soft peach pink with a satin finish. This one down here is Chocolate 2 from the Grand Pro 1 palette. It's the number six shade in that palette. It's described as rich chocolate brown with a matte finish. This one is Mahogany. It doesn't say where it's from. It's described as deep plum with a shimmer finish. This one is Coin Tray from the Siren palette, the number six shade in that palette. Warm Copper with a shimmer finish. And this one is Hannah. doesn't say where it's from. Antique Gold with a shimmer finish. So these are the shades. So thank you if you're still here and you will see me soon.